Hey guys, Paul here from Go Hunt in the Go Hunt showroom. And today we just wanted to talk about some shoes because it is January, it's a new year, and training season is now. Uh, we don't want to wait to the last minute. We definitely want to be prepared, get outside, stay active, and maybe our shoes from last year just aren't holding up. So we want to look at some shoes that we carry in the Go Hunt gear shop, some that we all use ourselves that we're excited about. And we feel that check a lot of boxes when it comes to in the gym, on the trail, or just that cross trainer that we think you could use as we prepare for this season. So we're gonna talk about some stuff today that's gonna to be more of the low tops. Nothing will be in a high top, uh, something similar to like the Ultra Superior 5 all the way up to the Olympus, and then some of our trail runners and others. Um, when it comes to shoes, there's a lot that goes on with just your foot alone. Uh, some feet will be one, or one foot will be larger than the other, which is completely normal. So it's nothing crazy to feel like, hey, for some reason my right foot goes numb, but my left foot doesn't, or for some reason my left foot's a lot shorter than my right foot, whatever it might be, uh, we can help kind of answer some of those questions today. When it comes to fitting a shoe, we just really want to start with some basics, and I kind of call it, some of you who've been in the showroom, I call it that Cinderella effect. We want to put it on and feel like it's just magic. Uh, that feeling alone is the initial idea of a shoe fitting well. If we put it on and we have to ask ourselves some questions, it might not really be the shoe for you. You might come in and look at a really cool shoe. Man, I like some color, I like some pop, I heard this shoe is great, and it might not fit. And that's okay, because we're gonna find you the shoe that does fit. So just a few key things when it comes to fitting is the initial feel in the shoe. How do we feel? That would be dictated by the shoe and yourself. We do wanna make sure we have about a thumb's width of space in front of the shoe here. This is gonna provide us a little room that if we're going downhill, our toes don't kind of dead end into the toe cup. Uh, we also wanna make sure that as our feet pronate, we have enough room in the front of the shoe here, and we don't wanna kill our toenails or create any blisters. Uh, a shoe that fits too tight or too narrow, you may find blisters in between the toes or on top of the toes. That's a really good indication we need a different shoe size. If you happen to find that you're getting blisters under the ball of the foot, your shoe might be too wide and we're doing too much of this. So as we're maybe landing on the forefoot, let's say running downhill, our shoes move, our foot's moving too much in the shoe, that can kind of cause a blister. So we want to be aware of those fits. Um, something like an Ultra that's got a really nice wide toe box is comfortable for pronation for any blood flow through the feet if the foot swells up a little bit, but be mindful if you have a narrow foot, Ultra might not be the fit for you. Um, another fit aspect that we want to talk about could be blisters on the heel. And that is a really big indication for a lot of folks because that means that maybe the heel cup is too wide and our heels just bouncing around in the back. So we can try some different lacing techniques to really keep that foot back in the heel cup, or we might need to look at a shoe that's got a narrower heel cup to kind of keep you a little more comfortable um, and go from there. So when it comes to trying on a shoe, we want to try it. Like if you guys are ordering online and having this sent home, we recommend trying it on in the house. So if you need to make a return, the shoe's going to be in perfect condition. We appreciate that. And try it on with the sock that you're going to be staying active in. Uh, we don't want to try anything on in like a, a dress sock or something that's going to be too heavy because it might not really give you a true fit and feel of what you're going to be uh, performing in. So try on those socks with the shoe and kind of get the idea of how it feels moving around, walking around the house, going up the stairs, down the stairs, whatever it may be. Um, you know, for got a Yeti, step, do your step ups and see how that shoe's really going to perform over time for you. Um, going away from that now, that kind of just the basics of the fit. Moving on to styles of shoes. Um, there's what they call a drop. And for those who are familiar with drop, there's millimeters of drop from heel to toe. Your typical trail running shoes, about 10 millimeters of drop. Uh, that's gonna be really helpful for those heel strikers as we're running through our cycle. Uh, we wanna have a little more cushion in the heel. For those that might land more neutral foot and everything else, landing from like midfoot forward to the ball of the foot, you could probably get away with anything from like seven to four or even a zero. Uh, a lot of us in the office run in the Ultra Olympuses, and that's a zero drop shoe, but as you can tell by the really thick heel, you have a lot of cushion that you can land on, which is very comfortable for heel strikers, which is just fine. Um, moving away from that, for the trail runners and the runners, we want to look for maybe a higher heel to toe drop. For those that are like the gym, working out in the gym shoe, um, your drop in some of those shoes, like if you're familiar with the Nike Rincon, uh, that's like a four millimeter drop. So something similar like a zero would be fine or even like a Scarpa Rebel Run is a four. And with the kind of tread 
and lugs that are on the bottom of a Scarpa Rebel and some of these shoes, it'd be great as a cross trainer. And we'll kind of like talk about those shoes each as we go through this. I just want to generally go over what to pay attention for in a shoe. Okay guys, so I want to go ahead and go through each shoe that I have here in front of me. And again, this isn't like the shoe you need to have, but these are really great examples of shoes that we feel can benefit you as we're getting ready to get outside, stay active, make sure everything's firing great. Our, our rifles are on point, bows are on point, we are on point, our bodies are on point, and we're feeling good going into whatever spring hunt we might have coming up because if we're going to be chasing bears pretty soon, we need to be in shape. If we're going to get ready for archery season, that pack out doesn't wait for you. We need to be ready for it now. So we feel that these shoes are really going to benefit you and get us back into shape and get active and get all that winter food off our waist, right? So I want to go ahead and start talking uh, about this shoe first. This is the Ultra Superior 5. Uh, this shoe is very, very basic in its design. It's not really flashy, not a lot going on. I really think this shoe with a zero drop, so from heel to toe, it's zero millimeters of drop. So it's very natural to the plane of your foot. Um, this shoe would be great in a gym, great for the home workout. If we're uh, swinging kettlebells or lifting at home and then we're mixing it with some cross training where we maybe do like a sprint down the driveway or we step into the gym and we're doing a lot of elliptical stuff or we want to throw on our pack and we're doing a heavy pack hike and mixing that in with a workout, I feel the Superior 5 is a really good shoe that can kind of blend all of that in for like some lighter running. Um, it still has some really good cushion in the heel, but for me, I personally would like something that's got a little bit more meat on its bones when it comes to running, because if we're trail running, like I like to do, it can change, your terrain changes, and so your foot's gonna change a little bit, and having a shoe that absorbs that pressure is really, really helpful. And that would take us over to the Ultra Olympus 5. Um, I know some of, you might, some of you might think about the color. I brought the color out as just an awareness that if we like to run early in the morning or in the evening, bright colors are great for awareness on the road. Uh, wearing a lot of dark colors and everything is, I mean, probably what we're used to. But for other cars and other pedestrians or people to see us, bright colors are nice. So I just brought that out as an example. The Ultra Olympus 5 is a trail runner loved by all of us here at Go Hunt. Uh, really, really nice thick heel for those um, heel strikes going downhill or uphill. Really nice wide toe box, accommodates that movement if we need to, some of that pronation or foot swelling. If you happen to feel like maybe your foot's getting a little numb in that shoe, it could be a volume issue. We might want to try lacing something different over those pressure points or go maybe a half size up to accommodate the volume of the foot. I just wanted to bring that up. So this would be a great road runner, a great trail runner. And if we want to mix that in with cross training, we could but I think this leans a little bit more to the running side of things, the way it's designed. Moving over to the La Sportiva Jackal. This shoe is an awesome shoe in my opinion. I think it is really bred and developed for much of what we're talking about here because the way it's designed is just incredible. The La Sportiva uh, Jackal has a seven millimeter drop from heel to toe, so it's bridging the gap a little bit between trail runner and gym shoe. It's not so high and not too low. Um, the lugs on these guys are really nice, but also it has an incredible rock plate on the bottom. So if we're stepping over anything that's got really big ridges, our, our shoe won't mold over it. What it'll actually do is kind of push the foot off to the side. So be wary of where you're stepping if you have weak ankles. But this rock plate is going to really reduce a lot of the pressure we might feel down in the bottom of our foot. So La Sportiva has done a pretty good job of that. Um, the shoe itself would be great at home, mixed in with some cross training. Again, kettlebells, home gym heavy pack hikes, and then up and down the driveway running, or take it out on the trail, nice light weight, run it into the ground, really good shoe option. This guy here is the Scarpa Golden Gate Kima RT. That was a lot, sorry guys. This again is probably that gym breed of shoe. It's about a six millimeter drop from heel to toe, so it's really comfortable for doing the elliptical, for doing our treadmills, we're doing our deadlifts and everything else, the weight distribution through the foot will be very, very comfortable. It runs a little bit narrower than some, so I would recommend if anybody orders this or you happen to come by the Go Hunt showroom and try it on, see how you feel side to side. We don't wanna, we wanna make sure we don't have too much friction if we start to run in this a little bit on a treadmill, an elliptical and so on. Um, so again, great cross training shoe. I think it would make a really good gym shoe. The way it looks is just really sleek and clean. Um, and then moving away from that, we're going to get into something a little more aggressive. This is the Scarpa Rebel Run. This is kind of Scarpa's version of the Jackal, which I have a pair of these, and they're very, very comfortable. They're kind of neat as well because they have a speed lace design. So if we're throwing on our shoes, we're zipping them up, we can take off. And I kind of like this like neoprene sock that it has in here, kind of like a built-in gaiter. 
that hugs around the foot a little bit, keeps a lot of debris out. It's really accommodating for trail runs. Again, this setup um, also has a four millimeter drop, so closer to the gym shoe, but still has enough tread on the bottom that we can definitely take it out and run on some uneven ground. Again, heavy pack hikes and so on. This checks a lot of boxes for those of us that are active. We want to take it out to the range and shoot our bows. We want to hike a 3D range. These shoes can do a lot of that for us, keep us active. I think an important thing too is having a shoe that we could take into many scenarios makes it a lot easier to stay active. If we feel like there's too many things to do, we might not want to do set activity with a certain, I got to lace my boots up every time. I don't want to wear that boot. It's kind of uncomfortable. Finding the trail runner that fits like that glass slipper makes all the difference in keeping us motivated, keeping us excited, and keeping us outdoors and in shape. So thank you guys for your time. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Head over to GoHunt.com and check out any of these shoes and more that we have available. Please feel free to hit a thumbs up or subscribe to the GoHunt channel. And thank you guys for watching.